Hi, I'm Ted Raddick with the Courier Sports Department. I'm here with Dave Hahnemann and Brandon Schreider, and welcome to the Courier's Chalk Talk, presented to you by our sponsor, Road State College. Uh, please be sure and check their website at roadstate.edu. So let's see what we can do to update the playoff uh, picture, boys. Uh, you know, last week when I said that we had no teams, Division One through Five, that were going to make it, I might have spoken too soon. Because Ottawa Glandorf in Division Five beat, shut out Division Four Kenton. They have Division Three Wapak this week. Now the Titans are sitting eleventh, but the team I saw I think can play with Wapak if they play like they did last Friday. So we'll keep an eye on them. You know they'll pick up some points if they beat Wapak. Uh, Division Six, Dave Region Twenty Two, Columbus Grove currently sitting fourth. Looking pretty good if they went out against uh, Allen East and Bluffton. Bluffton. So they got a decent shot. Allen East would give them the most points because right. they're, they're four and four and they're either the same size as them or a bit, uh, they might, nope, I'm sorry, yeah, they're a Division Six school. So they'll get the points there. If they went out, uh, they're solidly locked in the playoff spot. Now, one team that's on the bubble right now is Cary, currently sitting eighth, but not likely to pick up a lot of second-level no. points here at the end of the season. Uh, who do they have in week 10? Is that the – that's not Mohawk, is it? No, they played Mohawk. They played already. Mohawk. Yeah, so, and uh, if you look down, the, t the top eight are going to make the playoffs. The top four host a first-round game. Um, the team that, I, that I jumped out to me was Hicksville. I mean, they're sitting there ninth. Uh, the last two teams they play are five and three teams. There's a lot of points for them to move up. The other team that jumped out at me was Northwood. Uh, Northwood's seven and one. They're sitting in the number seven spot. But uh, they've played one team with a winning record, so their second level points will hold, hurt them in the long run. All right. Well, the tack is awful. <laughs> uh, one team is clinched, Brandon. That's Mohawk in Division 7, Region 26. They are in for sure. Um, Still some battling to do. Uh, currently, Lipsick is ninth. Arlington is tenth. They play in week ten, as we know. Yeah, they both um, dropped a spot from last week. Right. Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. Right. Both of them. And mm -hmm. Obviously, Patrick Henry is going to have a tough one week ten against Liberty Center. So right. that could let either Lipsick or Arlington in there. But kind of feel like the winner of that Lipsick Arlington game could get in regardless, as long as that team also wins this week. Um, South Central and St. Paul as well sitting, I think it's fifth and maybe eighth right now, and neither yep. team really has a, a tough schedule left, so you kind of figure they're going to win out. I'm not sure how many points that's going right. to translate to, but yeah, I mean, Arlington could potentially finish seven and three and not make it. Right. Um, even eight and two, even a win over Lipsick, I mean, you still don't even maybe know not. at that point. Yeah. So, it's I mean, a fun time of the year for sure. <laughs> Now, one team that's going to have fun this uh, weekend is Finley. They get oh. uh, they get a powerhouse. They, they get, get Toledo, Toledo Central, Central Catholic. Uh, just Toledo Central Catholic is the. This is why you play play football though, is to play good teams like this. Right, and I and I talked that over with Coach Ritzler today. I said if if nothing else, you've got a very young team, and you're going against one of the best teams in the state, regardless of divisions, and. Uh, this is the benchmark team in the track. They've won the most championships, uh, the most state championships. They've won three in the last eight years. Uh, they're just, and this is one of their best teams yet. It's not that they're offensively so strong. It's defensively they're phenomenal. They've shut out three straight teams, and that includes Whitmer Saint, and St. John's, who are good offensive teams. And uh, like I said with Coach Ritzler, he, he's very young. This is, and he said, the term he used was measuring stick. Right. What do we have to do to elevate our game to get to that kind of level? And it, it'd be going a long ways. But their young kids are going to get their eyes opened by what, a, what a, one of the best teams in the state is like. Okay. What are some of the games you're looking at this week, Brandon? Uh, well, we actually only have two games where both teams are over 500 this week. That's Mohawk Winford and then Tiffin Calvert and Willard. Uh, with Mohawk, obviously they're still playing uh, – for possibly a 10 and 0 season, right. still trying to clinch the in 10 title. But little little added bonus here is they haven't beat Winford since 2006, 
And since 2010, they've been shut out four times and outscored 222 to 39. So, I mean, you still kind of think Mohawk's the favorite, and there's definitely some added fuel there right. to try to go 9-0. and um, And then with Calvert and Willard, um, Calvert obviously needs to beat Willard, and then Willard plays Gibsonburg, which is 5-0 and in the SBC River. If uh, Willard would beat Gibsonburg in Week 10 and Calvert wins this week, they would earn a share of the conference title. So a little bit going on in that game as well. Right. Um, I'm also kind of looking at uh, Grove and Allen East, which we touched on a little bit. Um, Allen East is actually the only opponent between Grove, Spencerville, and Crestview who's at least 500 out of the last two weeks. So really the toughest game any of those three teams have right now. And so Grove will need a win this week to keep their name in the potential NWC title conversation. Okay. And then one last one I was looking at, a BVC one, is just Van Buren and Liberty Benton. Uh, both are averaging about 40 points a game over their last – I think it was like three or four games each. So probably whoever's defense there steps up. Be a, Both at least teams a good, playing for pride, trying to finish out the season at least 500. Right. Well, and even, I mean, it's a stretch, but Liberty Benton 12th right now in Region 22. Right. They win this week and beat McComb in Week 10. You never know. Right, but, right. So There's a chance there, I yeah. guess. All right, one last thing before we go, Dave. Maslin hung 101 points on some team from Pennsylvania. Yes. What do you think? I think it's ridiculous. There has to be something in the that you can. And and I know they had the scrubs in, and, and, but there's things you can do to avoid just running up and down the field against a team that is 73 to six at halftime, and they run a pitch lateral play to get some kid a record on the right. opening kickoff of the second half to make it 80 to six. Right. That that that's just not ridiculous. That, that's not good sportsmanship. It's right. not good uh, character building for these kids. I don't know what you're trying to teach them, but there had to be – something should have been done. You know, and I'm all about play it out. Winning's winning, losing's losing. But, you know, once you get a nice, comfortable 94-6 to lead, Brandon, do you think you need that last touchdown? I'm going to have to say no. Right. I don't, I don't think it's – it wasn't that close. Right. I mean, hmm. Okay. Well, thank you again to our sponsor, Road State College. That's roadstate.edu, and we will see you next week.